participated in this debate today. I think it's shown some fundamental disagreements and some fundamental differences. First of all, there's a, there's a strong suggestion here from an NFIB study that was done before this, this law was ever written that has nothing to do with this law saying you might lose jobs. But what do we see since the law has passed? We see that for employers of under 10 employees, health care coverage has risen by 10 percent because we've made it less expensive for small businesses to offer that health insurance. That's not a self-interested study. What you see from United Healthcare, the, large, the largest health insurer in the, in the, uh, in the country, 75,000 new customers to their health plans from employees of small businesses because the small businesses find it affordable to extend health insurance as a benefit of working for that small business. Blue, Blue Cross Blue Shield of Kansas City says the number of small businesses buying insurance since April for the first, the first month after the legislation was signed has jumped 58 percent. Small business employ, employers are for the first time able to extend insurance, affordable insurance, to their employees. And that's why the job creation that Mr. Andrews referred to of a, mi a million jobs since the passage of this bill is continued and expected to continue. That's why it's different than the history prior to the Obama administration when over eight years, almost 800,000 jobs were lost during those, those years of the Bush administration. But there's something more important in this legislation, and that is whether or not families will have the control of their health insurance destiny whether they will have the freedom to make these choices. Many on the other side of the aisle said this is a bureaucratic system. Has anybody, any family in America, any single mother, any, any spouse, any child, any grandparent met a more bureaucratic system than the American health insurance system. There is no more bureaucratic system. When you send in your premium, they tell you you sent it the wrong place. When you send in your bill, you send it to the wrong person. When you send it to the right person, they say that person's left their job. When you say, I went to the doctor, they say you should have called this first. When you say, I had emergency surgery, you should have called this first. We're not covering it. You want to talk about bureaucracy, ladies and gentlemen, and that's why this legislation is growing in popularity, because small businesses see, senior citizens see, parents with children under 26, they see a chance to liberate themselves from the most arbitrary, the most capricious, the most bureaucratic system in our entire free economy, and that's the insurance companies. Everybody has been run around the block by their insurance companies. It's something they all share. It's almost the problems they share with their cable company. Not quite, but, the, but it's not as dramatic here, because this is life and death. This is the security of your family. This is whether or not you can change jobs. This is whether or not your children will be protected. This is whether or not your parents will be able to afford their prescription drugs. Because that's what this legislation enables and gives the freedom to American families to have. Repeal, we go back into the clutches, the clutches of these bureaucrats spread across the world in the, in the insurance company, you call for help and you reach somebody in another country, in another time zone, with no understanding of the emergency that your family, your child, your grandparent, your parent faces. Nobody wants to go back there, ladies and gentlemen. Nobody. They've been there for 50 years, and health care costs have gone up faster gentlemen, than any other segment expired. in our economy. Faster than anything you can imagine. Gentlemen, faster than a speedy expired. rocket. Faster than a speeding airplane, faster than Superman, health care costs have gone up because of the insurance bureaucracy. Gentlemen's time has expired. Gentleman from Minnesota. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I, it, I actually don't.